Night of Anime here bringing you my review for Black Clover episode 27. And so the episode starts off with showing the aftermath of the invasion and I will say I do kind of question how, how I do kind of question how 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 fway 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 is still alive or even being kept alive for that matter. Like with his arm and part of his side having been like severed, like just torn off and just bloodied and battered like that. I, I guess, like, I just question, like, how is the guy still alive after all that? But I guess anime logic and him being one of the captains, I guess he does have the luxury of being given the endurance excuse. Like, he probably has so much endurance, he's, he, can probably, he can probably survive a little something like that. But even more than that, we learned that the pen that he was wearing has gone miss. Apparently he was wearing a pendant, and it's gone missing. And I think it's fair to assume that it's probably contained... Probably could name one of the gems the Midnight Sun Cult needs to power that tablet. Actually, I think there. Actually, not that I think, but I think there was a scene like that in a previous episode. But either way, this reinforces what 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 what, what pretty much all what pretty much all, all those cultist guys were after, and it even builds on the mystery of what happens once the tablet is is fully powered. Like we we, we still don't know exactly what's going to happen once this tablet is once this tablet is powered up. But whatever it is, it's not going to be good and. And as far as, and uh, yeah, and, uh, and yeah, I, I even do like how, uh, and one thing I even like here is that, uh, is that in terms, is that, is that the Midnight Cold are proving themselves to be definitely a force to be reckoned with. And, like, they definitely aren't, aren't your typical shonen protagonists, like, like, they, like, they're typically aren't typical shonen antagonists, they will basically get the upper hand. On, on their opponent, like, the, 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 these victories are not going to come easy for sure, for basically all of them, and, and, and basically all, everyone, everyone realized that in this episode, like, these guys are serious, and they're going to, if we're not careful, they, they, they will, they will definitely, they, they will definitely take care, of, they will definitely, we will definitely lose, and the kingdom will be destroyed, kind of thing, so yeah, like that, but, uh, after that, the Wizard King brings up the prospect of a traitor, and yeah, right now for me personally, I'm writing the It's William Vaughn train, because even even though it was very brief, the guy who's presumably the leader of the Midnight Sun does have sure similar appearance, appear, does share similar appearance, definitely body-wise, to William. Plus, he's always hiding his fi plus William is always hiding his face under that mask too, so we, we don't even know what William is hiding under his mask there. So, and... And I'm sure if, if we did see it removed, it would probably be like 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 the like the, the leader of the Midnight Sun has like from what I understand he has markings on his face. And if we and if he removed the mask, I'm sure we would definitely see we would see those markings or something like that. Um I mean, of course I'm sure they're probably gonna fake us out in some way with this, but right now, like all the pieces seem to be pointing a little too much in the direction that yeah, it's it's William Vaughn's for sure. Um but yeah. So through and af after that, the, the rest is just kind of is kind of just uh, is just kind of aftermath of seeing of seeing how everyone of everyone's thoughts of uh, of what they think of of uh, after this invasion and and what to think of all out of it. And through a rather comically brief spar between Nasty and you, we get an interesting showcase of how strong they've got they've both gotten since this invasion. And I get the feeling this is like, at, like the, him, like you, you, you know, basically something that, that uh, basically Windhawk or something, that was badass in itself. But uh, like seeing that and and you know base and and you know when as to spar like that, I get the feeling we've only seen seen the beginning for both of them because. We have no idea how much more power Asta might be able to draw from from his anti magic swords, or God forbid, how much you know can draw can can, can draw from from, from from his grimoire. Definitely, definitely now that he has this this whole wind sprite accompanying him, he's definitely now that he has this wind sprite hanging around him. Although, although I will admit, uh, I, I do think Asta's. Asta's anti magic probably has has probably uh, has has probably uh, has has probably uh, did, I mean I, I'm sure both of them have have possibilities for the future, but I like to think Asta's magic has 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 more room for development because because we haven't really seen a whole lot of Asta's magic of what of what of what Asta can can develop with these anti magic swords and, and how powerful they can get. Also, if you think of if you think of Yuno's like wind sprite or whatnot. 
at the, I think I, I think the limitation with Yuno's wind sprite right now is that it, his his magic can, his like he, he can of course summon magic I think w without the wind sprite, but I think a lot of his magic up to this point is going to depend on that wind sprite and it really just all depends on on from how strong that wind sprite itself becomes like Asta's mad. Like the, or, or sorry, I'm talking about Yuno's. I don't know why I keep getting those mixed up. But but Yuno's but Yuno's wind magic is very much um it, it's very much limited. I think at this point to pretty much that wind sprite and and how much the wind sprite itself can can definitely develop and get stronger. So yeah, I think I think it's gonna be one of those things where where if 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 Yuno ends up training himself, it's gonna he's gonna have to train that that wind sprite to get stronger as well. If he, if he plans to harness a lot more powerful magic, so yeah. Um, okay, so after that, okay, so after that, we learned that uh, Asta and Charmy got promoted from defending the capital. And what I really like about this is how the show isn't forgetting to include include that factor. That if you want to become Magic Emperor, you gotta keep moving up the ranks and gaining prestige. And I know that doesn't sound like a very, like a very, um, I know it's one of those things that, that doesn't sound all that, doesn't sound, doesn't sound all that, uh, all, all that important, but if you really think about it, in, in the previous era of Shonen, Naruto, Naruto, all that, it never really had, it never really, never really tried to even, even focus on any of that, like, like for instance in Naruto, like I said, the whole thing of becoming Hokage, okay, we introduced, for Naruto, we introduced all the, we introduced Chunin, Genin, jo, Chunin, Jonin, all these different ranks of, of Shinobi. Naruto stayed Genin throughout the entire series, and I get why. It's to promote, it's, it's to promote the whole, uh, the whole underdog thing. I get it. But, at the same time, when, when you introduce a system like this, and you don't capitalize on it, it feels kind of pointless to the story after a while. Feels like it becomes pointless to the story after a while if you're not going to capitalize on it. Here, Black Clover is actually capitalizing on that. So, in so, and and in a way, like I I don't know if if Asta is going to if Asta is going to is going to keep a is going to is going to gain any more. But I'm at least happy he at least gained one rank up. I'm glad he at least did that, because at the because yeah at the very like if and. And and it and it works because it fits into the story of 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 what becoming magic emperor means. Like you, you definitely have to gain the rank, the prestige. You have to gain all that if you even hope of being recommended as magic emperor. And I think, and if I'm not mistaken, I I think the I think the uh, I I think I think uh, I, I think promoting and I think promoting a new magic emperor also falls on. On the hands of the actual king of, of the Clover Kingdom, like not not the Magic Emperor, but but the Clover but the Clover King himself. Like I think I think that's who I, I think that's who who basically appoints a new Magic Emperor. So yeah, he, as as uh, as probably weak as shit as he is, and as weak as probably as weak as shit physically he probably is, he does have political power to promote a new Magic Emperor. So yeah, Asta, hate to tell you, buddy, but if you're gonna you're gonna move with Ernie, so you're gonna have to prove yourself to that asshole. Uh, but yeah, it's just overall, I like how how, how the show is promoting the, this whole idea of, of of actually being promoted to in order to gain the rank, in, in order to gain the title of Magic Emperor and whatnot. Um, now, there's one scene I really like, which is which which is which is, which is, it was Nozelle swearing revenge, which is which is Nozelle who was swearing revenge for pretty much the, the entire Vermilion family, especially for Golian. Like, no, 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 Zell basically said he was going to get revenge. Or, or he was going to get revenge for his, what, what happened, what happened to, what happened, what happened to, 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 Golian, and the reason why, and the reason why I like this scene, is that throughout Black Clover thus far, Nozel has proven to me that he's probably the least dickish of all the Silvas, who aren't Nozel, like, and 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 yet, yeah, he he, and he's definitely proven that that he does have, and in many res, and I think in many respects for that. He could actually be seen. He's kind of like Byakuya of this series in a way, because he, on on the surface, he acts like a he acts like an asshole. That part is obvious, but underneath it, 
all he does have a sense of compassion and res- a compassion for, for 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 everyone he respects. And even though it wasn't her monologue, it was just nice to see that caring side of him. That's saying, yeah, I I, I definitely can't speak for for the other two, but at least we can say that, that Nozel, he's not a complete asshole. I, I I and actually in many respects I can see it that one day. Uh, that, that one day Noel is gonna is gonna end up proving herself to is gonna pro- is gonna prove herself to her family and and he and she will gain and she will gain the, the respect of her brother for sure. So yeah, I can I, I think this is opening the door that yeah be, 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 because of who Nozel is as a character I can see no, I can see Noel definitely gaining his respect at some point in the series. But um, yeah, guys, that's my review. Enjoy the video. Like, comment, subscribe. Follow me on Twitter and Facebook. That night of the night. Signing off. Later, guys.